Well, good evening, good evening. It is Tuesday, the 18th of February, 2014. Forgive the headphones. I need the headphones for the little section that's coming up very shortly um, because my little ones are broken. So I had to put my big ones on. But yes, good evening. I hope you are all well out there. Um, it is nine o'clock and it is vaporchannels.tv. And uh, you, my friends, you're watching Vapor Scene. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Yes, good evening, good evening. It is just after nine o'clock on Tuesday the 18th of February 2014 and uh, you are indeed watching Vapor Scene here on Vapertails.tv and uh, we've got some interesting stuff coming up in this week's show. Um, today, in about 28 minutes, uh, will be my second anniversary of moving from smoking to using these. Yeah, it was Friday the 18th of, uh, of February uh, and I started with a little Reva 901 kit. Uh, and uh, look at me now. <laughs> There's been so many changes over the past two years. Um, so many new bits of kit, so many different juices, so many events. And so much has happened in the world that we, uh, that we live in. Not only with vaping, but <laughs> global warming, all sorts of stuff. Oh, it's been a very strange two years. And thank you to chat. Uh, for giving me those salutations there on my two years. Uh, and I have to say that um, I, I've not never looked back on, on quitting uh, smoking, uh, although, as we all know, I still use nicotine, um, but in a much more enjoyable, flavoursome and safer way. Yes. Um, and talking about safer ways, um, the story that has appeared over the last couple of days about a dog that has died from ingesting e-liquid uh, and uh, we're just going to have a quick look at that. Um, on the BBC News, local for Cornwall, uh, dangerous e-cigarette nicotine capsule kills puppy. Um, a puppy has died after chewing a nicotine capsule for an electronic cigarette. A vet in Cornwall worked through the night to save the 12-week-old year, 12 year week old terrier. Um, but it died in the early hours. Um, now Keith Sutton, who's from Red Ruth, um, has said a couple of things uh, and there's a, a few conflicting reports on exactly what has happened um, but we do know that this poor dog has died from ingesting nicotine in some form. Uh, this is what he actually said in his post. Um, he said about six weeks ago I started vaping, smoking an e-cigarette that uses fluid with pure nicotine in it. Yesterday evening my dogs, one a 14 week old puppy, were playing in the dining room, then it all went quiet. After uh, either mean sleep or up to no good, and having had a dog myself I know exactly what that means. Um, I went to see what was happening and to my horror, pup had somehow got hold of a bottle of e-liquid and had managed to pierce the bottle. The resulting smear of nicotine on her tooth claimed her life this morning after being in the vets all night. The e-fluid is lethal be warned, there appears to be no cure and the lids are not childproof lids. Please, please share this. This is nicotine, is a lethal poison and people should be warned. Now, this has appeared on the mail as well. They've picked up the story as well. Um, puppy dies from acute nicotine poison after chewing up its owner's e-cigarette. Uh, and then there are some pictures there of the, uh, the young pup. Uh, and the whole article is quite long, so... We won't go into the whole article. Um, but what I thought I'd do is uh, I've got Kat to join me tonight. So I'm just going to bring her in now. Uh, if I get that button. Good evening, Kat. Good evening, Marco. Good evening, everybody. Hello. How are you all? Now, you'll see a picture of Kat there. 
there even <laughs> somewhere right oh, no, it's there somewhere uh, yeah you'll see a picture of the cat uh, unfortunately with my bandwidth i can't really have video and um, that's why we're just audio only and you're just going to see a picture um but uh what's your take on this cat well i saw it last night um quite late on on the internet and thought oh no here we go again um and this morning uh, I saw it on the uh, BBC website and um, when I read what it had to say on the BBC website I thought that's quite factual and acceptable. However, what upset me a little bit is when I went on to Facebook I found that a vet in my area had several posts already in place, um, one from the owner of this dog um, regarding what had happened and the story seemed to be a little bit more elaborated upon. So I thought this is a little bit worrying so I put a post on our own Facebook page and I contacted the vet that we use up here uh, in my cat protection role and um, had a bit chat with him about it mm -hmm. and he confirmed because it, I mean we, we'd spoken about how puppies would sit and chew through a packet of cigarettes no problem and dogs would and it's it's quite a common thing um, and this is no different but it was the the non-facts that were a little bit worrying to me so I sort of looked away from the story of the man and the very sad tale of the death of his dog and looked at the bigger picture here and it was saying that um, the juice was in a bottle that wasn't marked, it didn't have a childproof cap. All things that we know that reputable sellers of juice do, they all put our chip compliant you know, so that worried me that they were looking at this. And in one post, it was actually mentioned that it was pure nicotine. Uh, no, he won't get pure nicotine in a bottle like that. So those were the things that immediately bothered me. And it bothered me that people didn't know or that there were some people out there who didn't know that nicotine was a poison. Yes. Um, um, yeah. Does that surprise you, Marco? It does surprise me, Kat. It really does. And I've been looking again, just as you were talking, at the at the photos on the Daily Mail piece. Uh, and if you go and have a look at those, it shows you. Which I haven't yet. It, it shows you the kit, and it shows you the bottle. Uh, the bottle's got warnings on. I'm just going to go and look at it now. Uh, the bottle's got the warnings on. Um, it looks to be a childproof cap as well. Um, and the 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 brand has been named. Um, by the guy uh, in the Daily Mail piece. Um, so it's a longer piece than it was on the BBC. Um, so what I'll do, well, Dave's got the link, so if Dave wants to put that in chat afterwards, um, people can go and have a look uh, and see what they think. Um, I mean, having had a dog until quite recently, um, I had a Springer Spaniel, and when he was a pup, he would eat anything. He ate a video remote control, um, shoes, slippers, mm. countless pairs of my socks uh, and he would just eat anything and I've known other dogs to do the same thing so I think the thing that we have to look at, the bigger picture as you say, uh, is nicotine is dangerous to, to all of us if we get it into our system when you know we have too much of it and it's dangerous to animals and it's dangerous to children. That's why it needs to be kept out of the way, somewhere safe and secure um, and of course accidents will happen, they will happen, um, but what I'm afraid of is, especially this week with the vote coming up, that um, stories like this that get really snowballed um, will have such a negative impact on, on us basically. Um, it, it's so tragic about the, the dog, I mean I'd be devastated if it was my dog and I'm sure the chap is very devastated. Uh, and he's, he said it was his fault. Um, 
I have seen some people saying some nasty things to him on, on Facebook posts, which is it's not really necessary. Um, no, because, as you say, it could happen to any of us at any time. I've knocked juices over. I've got the cat from hell lives with me that would actually go and knock down a bottle of juice just for the sheer hell of, you know, watching the dog play with it. So it can happen. And if it happened to me, I would just say, well, it happened to me. You know, I, my mistake. I shouldn't have done this. I should have been more vigilant. But the thing that people need to remember is until recently, nicotine was widely used as a pesticide in the UK. It isn't used quite as much now. There are other um, more specific um, chemicals out there now that target a specific pest rather than nicotine, which killed everything. Um, but we've got to accept that nicotine is also being used for medical advancement, for the treatment of Parkinson's, etc. There's a lot of tests going on in that direction. So it's here to stay. You know, we have to live with it. Now, we wouldn't sit with a cup of bleach sitting on our, on your desk, would you? You know? So we all get used to the poisons out there, putting them out of the way and putting them somewhere where, let's, let's say the word, a child, rather than a dog or a cat or a budgie or a rabbit or whatever it is, a child could get hurt. So we need to be very, very aware, all of us. But I know the people I'm talking to already are aware. They know. Everybody in chat there, there's not one of them is going to disagree with me. I know that. But it's when, when I see posts like this full of inaccuracies, and this has now led to one vet answering that post and saying, nicotine, yes, okay, people can use these ASICs, but don't need to quit smoking. And I've had to respond to that mm -hmm. because it's not right. It's untested and hazardous is what he said. So, you know, even the, sorry, I'm going to swear, even the bloody veterinary profession are being guided away from us, from supporting us. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. that's bothering me. Yeah. And I have to ask myself, how did this get in the news? Yes. Um that, I have to ask that. Yeah, that question. And well, why? The answer to that question, uh, yeah, only a few people are going to know, aren't they? Obviously, yeah, I the mean, guy's been distressed. Somebody posted, sorry, Marco, somebody posted on Facebook, and I'm not sure which um, post it was on, if whether it was ours or whether it was the veterinary one, that um, 23 children are taken into hospital with alcohol poisoning every day. Yeah. But that does not make the news. No. Um, uh, alcohol is so readily out there. But then how many children get taken hospital for drinking bleach uh, or for drinking something else? That's why they put Bitex in products to make it less appealing uh, and to make it nasty on the mouth. Um, so it's nicotine is a poison. We know it's a poison. Um, we know that other things that are poisonous as well and should be kept uh, if you've got children in a locked cupboard or high up out of their reach and exactly the same thing with animals and pets um animals and pets uh, <laughs> i don't i mean i mix my own uh, and when i'm mixing i make sure that the cats aren't anywhere near me and they don't jump up because if they do they'll get it on their paws so i'm i'm uber careful around my animals um as i know we all are um, this is just one of those unfortunate things that's happened uh, and yeah. um, it's, it's snowballed a little bit with the amount of attention it's got and maybe for the wrong reasons rather than the right reasons, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that the advice my vet gave is exactly the same as I would give. Something like that, seek veterinary advice immediately. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you do. That's what a vet is paid for. That is their job. It is not yours. It's not mine. It's not anybody's. It's their job. You know, and, and this chap reckons he got the animal to a vet 
very soon it was a very young animal. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much of that stuff it ingested. And I'm not criticizing anything that was done or what happened there. It's, as you say, it's the way it snowballed that worries me. You know, I feel very sorry for the people who lost their dog. I really do, because it's horrible when you lose an animal. And especially with something like this that was accidental. But that's what it was. It was accidental. You know, I'm sitting here now with two eat sinks on the go. And if I turn to my left, there is a bottle of juice, 30 ml bottle. And it's just sitting there. So... I'm in exactly the same position. That could I could easily knock that over, and before I know where I am, my young dog could be chewing it. Yeah. So vigilance is the key where it comes to accidents. It's the same with any accident, though, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. An accident is just that. It's an unforeseen circumstance. Um, That's and, right. And they happen. So, and I mean, someone in chat has just mentioned, Whip It Up's mentioned, antifreeze kills pets and apparently tea is sweet. Can I tell you a little tale about that? Yes, you can. About um, three, four years ago, here in the northeast, we had an awful lot of reports of cats being poisoned. And a lot of people felt it was Mr. So-and-so down the street or this one up the road and what have you. And we got together with the local authority and with the RSPCA and we put together a petition And that petition was to ask for antifreeze to be made the same as it is in the U.S., where PG is used and not ethylene, right? Mm -hmm. And that that particular petition gained 23,000 signatories, 23,000. So it had to be heard. Right, it had to be heard, and it was heard, and it it was said in the relevance of it could kill children, not pets, because they don't exist in the world of politics. Children, it was a risk to children because, obviously, ethylene tastes sweet as well, you know, and can kids can be attracted to it, and it was turned down, and the reason it was turned down was there hadn't been enough deaths. Now, the way they're going on regarding e-cigs, God help us if there was one proven death, one, related to e-cigs. But where it comes to antifreeze, which Mm -hmm. there has been quite a lot of deaths of children, it's not relevant. There's not enough yet. Well, there's also been So I just wanted to share that one. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what I, what I said to you earlier on when we were talking cat in a second, but I was just about to say that there's been plenty of deaths related to antifreeze in wine and in vodka, um, where people, unscrupulous people, have uh, filled out stuff and sold it as a real thing. Um, but my mother-in-law's cat was poisoned by antifreeze uh, about 18 months ago, uh, and it died an excruciatingly uh, bad death. Uh, and yeah. We don't know whether it was deliberate or whether it was from a water feature or whether the cat had just licked a puddle of water off the road that had come out of a car. Don't know. Yeah. Um, but on the uh, on the RSPCA website, it does give you some guidelines, um, especially for cats with antifreeze poisoning. Uh, and they like, as you said, the taste of antifreeze because it is sweet. Um, and they also give some advice um, on how to spot antifreeze poisoning and what to do. Uh, And if you do have any concerns, go to the RSPCA website uh, and get the full information on what you should be looking at. Um, But I think what we just need to get across is that we all need to be careful with our e-juice and uh, and with our e-cigs around pets and uh, and kids, don't we? We do. And just one little point to bring up. The EU are talking about 10 mil bottles, right? One person posted the size that a label would be containing all the right relevant information on a 10 mil bottle. And frankly, you would need a pair of binoculars to read it. So there's an argument that we haven't considered before. 
against 10 ml bottles and putting it in a box with a, a note in is not going to cover it because the majority of people don't read it. But if you've got a poison label, just that poison label of the skull and crossbones stands out. So I don't want to see 10 ml bottles becoming the norm. No, no. The, the writing is too small for all the warnings. You're quite correct. Uh, and uh, let's see what happens next week because uh, the vote is uh, next week, isn't it? So we'll be waiting um, next Wednesday, is it? 26th. Um, to see what happens Shall, yes. yeah see what happens over there well I think we better wrap this one up um, thank you so much for joining me tonight Kat um, first time you're ever you're welcome first thank you for ever. inviting me I've had a live guest on the show <laughs> uh, even though if it well, was audio I don't audio. know about live I'm full of cold <laughs> half dead but I'm half here anyway <laughs> <laughs> well listen thank you so much Kat uh, we will speak later on uh, for now, guys, I am going to uh, go to the break, and when we come back, uh, we're going to have a Juicy Juicy from, uh, I'm looking for the ads now, uh, we've got a Juicy Juicy from Davey, uh, and um, some familiar hands make an appearance. Hmm, see you in two. Be sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor, of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Iveber and Iveber Alexa, best in Yorkshire for your basic needs. That's iveber.co.uk and iveber-alexa.co.uk. Iveber and iveber-alexa.co.uk are proud sponsors of vapertrails.tv. Now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Welcome indeed back to part two, uh, which is a little bit later than normal because Kat and I chatted for quite a while there. Um, so uh, never mind, we'll just run over a bit. Uh, you get a bit more than 30 minutes. I seem to do it every week anyway, don't I? <laughs> Eventually I'll get to the hour. Who knows? Anyway, um, a sad week really uh, for that poor guy. But um, let's move on and have some fun now. Uh, and Davy had some more juices. So I said, Davey, send me another Juicy Juicy, because, you know, the guys love Juicy Juicy. So um, here it is, and don't expect anything too nasty this week. Juicy 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 Hi guys, juice review time. Um, I'm really hoping these aren't going to be as bad as the last ones. 
you know, the bacon and all that stuff. Um, I got sent a three bottles of juice from Vape Swag. Uh, here we are, vapeswag.co.uk. Got a very Star Wars like logo. Just drop that. There we go. Um, and the three juices I got sent, I, I've paid for these. Um, Jamie did offer to send them free of charge, but I said no, I'll pay for them because I'm going to give my honest opinion of them. So the three juices I've been sent are, first of all, their best seller, which is Cookie Cappuccino. I've got Black Cherry Tunes. And I've got, intriguingly, Malik's Mix. So that one's named after me. Hehe. <laughs> Right, so what I'm going to start with, I'll start with the bestseller, which is the Cookie Cappuccino. Um, I'm not a coffee vape fan, but apparently, as Jamie said, this is one of their bestsellers. So I've got a rewicked Igo L on top of the um, 134, and that's at 11 watts. So let's try the Cookie Cappuccino. It smells good. Uh, one thing I want to point out, the I mean the bottle's fine, they're all they are child proof and you've got the warnings on there. The only thing missing is there's no tactile labels on any of them with the little uh, raised triangle. So that does need to be sorted out. But here we go. Cookie cappuccino. Turn on, there we go. Definitely coffee. Not getting much cookie from it. Um, I should point out as well, these are all 50-50 uh, mixes at 18 milligrams. Vapour, as you can see, is quite good. Yeah, very strong coffee flavour. Um, and then on the exhale, there is a sweetness there, but it's only a hint. It's I would prefer personally that there was more sweetness to it. But that's not bad. As far as coffee vapes go, for me, that is not bad at all. It lingers in your throat. Hmm, not bad. Okay, I'm going to burn that off. And then I'll go to the next one. I think I'll do the Black Cherry Tunes next. And I'll save the one named after me for last. <laughs> there we go. Okay, this is a lovely pinky purple colour. Just put four drops in. Now that's very nice. Get a lovely cherry, deep cherry flavour on the inhale. And then at the back of your throat you get the, the coolness, the menthol I think. And then that all comes out on the exhale and mixes together. That's very nice, very pleasant. Again, good vapour. There's a nice throat hit, nice and cooling. I like that. I do like that. Hmm. I think I might be using that quite often. Right, final one. Let's burn this one off. go. Final one, Malik's Mix. Now, 
There's a very aniseed smell to this. And I like aniseed. So, a couple of drops in there. Oh, it smells nice. Yeah, that is delicious. Um, there's aniseed in there, there's a hot spice in there. And there's some fruit in there, I think, as well. Yeah, there's a definite sweetness to it. The cinnamon is quite overpowering, I think. The aniseed is there more in the smell and at the back of your throat or out of your nose, you can feel that. Cinnamon obviously is there and there's a sweetness. I don't know what the sweetness is. I can't quite detect it, but there's definite sweetness there. It could be cherry again, but that's another lovely one. Um, I'm very impressed with these. Very impressed with these. That is vape swag. Thank you very much, Jamie. Um, I'm going to enjoy these juices. I probably won't use the uh, the cookie cappuccino that much. But the black cherry tunes and Malix mix, they're winners. They're really, really good juices. Um, there you go. Three new juices. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you later. Juicy, 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 juicy. And thank you, as always, to Davey Malik for doing me another juicy, juicy. Uh, I was just watching chat scroll past there as that was uh, playing back. And yeah, taste is very subjective. Um, you know, one, one man's meat is another man's poison, as they say. Some people might find them totally disgraceful and disgusting, like I did with the spider venom. Didn't like it, but Davey loves it. Um, Coffee-wise, I have to say, um, the caramel vanilla macchiato that I had a while ago from uh, Health Vape is very nice. I do like that one a lot. Uh, and the XO coffees are quite good. Um, I've had a few of those, um, but it is very difficult to get one exactly as you like it. Uh, and unless you mix it yourself, you're probably not going to. Um, but there you go. Okay, so where are we going to go next? Yes, <laughs> it's a bit strange. It's kind of 9.33 and I'm thinking oh, I should be wrapping it up. But eh, come on, it's my vaporversary. Um, so what I thought I'd do, um, since Tin Your Tip hasn't been around for a while, uh, I had a little Skype with Mark Jones and uh, he very kindly offered me a video. Um, so um, here's part one of a three-parter. Enjoy. Vapor scene does. Tin your tip. Tin your tip. Tin your tip. This week, um, I'm recording this a bit early. There's, what I'm doing is sort of a special request from the wife of one of our viewers. And as I don't want to spoil the surprise for a Christmas, I'm going to be doing it now and then showing it between Christmas and New Year, I believe. Um, what I was asked to do was, could I do something penguin related, shall we say. I thought about uh, one of the standard tin mods with the penguin book logo on it, something like that. But I saw this online and I thought it would be perfect. I believe it's a tin sort of Christmas tea decoration at some point. Probably contains sweets. And when I ordered it, I shall I say I got the measurements a bit wrong. As I didn't take into account the shape of it truly. As it said it was four inches by three inches. Which indeed it is, but it narrows greatly at the top. Quite far at the bottom and obviously the arms. So, as you'll be able to tell, there is not a massive amount of room in here. I'm only going to get a single 18650 in here no matter what I do. 
and I've got plenty of room for an atomizer connected at the top and the switch. So I could just do a simple mod, but I hate doing that. So this will be the switch I'll be using for a start. And this comes with a clip on button. So what I'm intending to do is with the battery in there, the switch will go through the back and this will come out on the outside if I didn't drop enough. Anyway, it'll come off on here. So that'll all work rather nicely. And for the electronics, I need something which works off a single battery. So the VV board is out of the question. And what I've got lying around, which I've planned to do something with for a long time, is this uh, Howitzer mod, uh, which takes an 18, 18650 and it's VV. So, quite simply, I'm going to start with this. First job is going to be to get this apart, and somewhere in here I've got a screwdriver. I'll do. It's just held together with two Phillips screws at the back. At least I'm hoping that's all it's held together with. Where the big nails come in handy. There we go. Uh, oh. so the top clips out, so all I've got to remove is one wire. And the wires for the switch. This should be very easy to do, provided that the board and the battery are going to fit in, of course. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do a complete replan. So, that's the casing separated. So we'll need to take off the existing 510 because that's no good of a size to fold on after. the rest of the case for something else at some point. So that way has come away. So we've got two wires here for the switch, two wires for the atomizer, and your positive and negative. All very simple. I've got a case. So if I pop that in there, hopefully, he says, yeah, easily. That is going to sit inside of here, no problem at all. If I can mount it fairly high up, like that, it means you've got access to the up and down buttons for adjusting the voltage. And plenty of room behind for the switch. So. Looks like I'm good to go. One thing to make it fit better, I'm just going to chuck 
chop a tiny part off this corner just to give me a little bit more room to work with. That just enables it, hopefully, to sit more to this side. Something like that. Now, just going by feel, I reckon somewhere central like that would be perfect for operating the switch with your thumb. And I think if I put the 510 connector in at a sort of angle, sort of like that, it should be quite good position to vape from. At least that's what I'm thinking about. So, my first job's going to be pilot holes as usual. Let's make sure the drills go in the right direction. Trying to avoid putting pressure onto it, otherwise, something like this can deform very easily. One pilot hole bill and a second. It's going to be a little bit more difficult because I'm not working straight on. Let's see how we go. There, with a bit of care, is the second hole. Now, I'm not entirely certain what size I need to drill out for that. I'm probably just going to play it by eye, I think. But I do know exactly what size I need for this. That's usually as marked out. And it's back to me. Hello. I hope you enjoyed that. Mark destroying Pengi. I was watching chat <laughs> as that was playing out. And you can see more of Mark's uh, penguin mod uh, next week. And as he said in chat there, um, he was making that for somebody for Christmas. Um, but he very kindly let me have the video. And I thought as Tino Tip has been off for a while, we'd have a little bit of fun. Um, so yes. Wow. Quarter to ten. Goodness gracious. Um, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's show. Um, don't forget, tomorrow night it's VT Talk and they have Dr. Farsalinos in attendance, so that should be rather interesting indeed. Uh, also, of course, there is VT Talk on Thursday, Dave's Tackle Box on Sunday, and Dave is back again with the Haze Hour with Keith and Kat on Monday, which brings us right around again to next week for Vapor Scene. Don't forget, if you are a German speaker, you can watch DE Talk. Uh, follow the link that's in chat at 10 o'clock. And there is RY4 Radio every night of the week. Uh, and you know where it is, ry4radio.com. So that was Vapor Scene on the 18th of February, 
2014. I will see you next week. Tati bye. is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. <laughs>